Well, it appears Donald Trump wants to remake the Republican National Committee in his image. Two sources tell NBC News Ronna McDaniel could leave her role as RNC chair after the South Carolina primary in just two weeks. And Team Trump has already signaled who he wants to replace McDaniel. Michael Watley, the chair of the North Carolina Republican Party and an election denier. New reporting in the New York Times this morning reads, quote, Watley has gained favor with Trump by embracing his stop the steal mantra. Mm. Joining us now, former Montana Governor Mark Rossico. He is an old friend of mine. He served as chairman of the Republican National Committee from 2002 to 2003. Governor, it is so good to have you on. Welcome to the table. Um, so, <laughs> you know, Governor, we um, we often it's the most Sanders Townsend. We often only have one chairman uh, at the table. Today we have two chairmen. I, I just have I have to ask, what, where were you and what did you think when you saw this news about Ronna McDaniel and, frankly, earlier in the week, the chief of staff stepping down? Like, what do you, what do you think? Well, first of all, can I say hello to Michael? It's a delight, Michael, to see you this morning and uh, miss you, uh, to be uh, very honest. Um, you know, the fact of the matter is, I don't know how to discern what Donald Trump thinks and doesn't think on any given day. And... As a consequence, I'm a little bit hesitant about them exceeding the boundaries of propriety. But at the same time, I also know that um, it's a cutthroat business with he and um, that gang that is a part of his enterprise and a part of his business and a part of his campaign. And so my guess would be that there's some area of performance that uh, Ronnie did not quite measure up to. And uh, that I would guess would be, and this is only a guess, is that one, the DNC has been out raising um, the RNC by a substantial measure. And secondly, of course, Donald Trump needs a lot of that money uh, to pay for all of his legal expenses. Um, it always seemed a bit of, a, of an unusual circumstance where um, he solicits um, from all these good people across the country and then, of course, uses it to pay uh, his own legal expenses. Um, but um, in addition to that, um, I haven't seen Ronald really waver or move away from defense of the uh, Trump mantra, but um, hard to guess and be accurate that those would be the two areas of suspicion that I would have. Gov, can you help me understand materially what this means for the Republican Party to, to bring the actual apparatus of the party even closer into the Trump sphere, especially when you're talking about some, some reported names being floated uh, as, as Ronna's replacement being election deniers themselves? Well, it, it, frankly, um, when you have the um, presidential office um, also engaged um, and uh, the president is a member of your party, it's literally controlled by the president and his staff and um, there's a lot of discretionary decision making, but it has largely to do with logistics in terms of um, philosophy and articulation of campaign tactics and those kinds of things. If the president is of your party, you're going to be engaged, but you're not going to dictate those things. If the reverse is true and the president is not of your party, then the RNC chair has a great deal more discretion and authority and more reliance upon its members. But the way that virtually everyone in the party has flocked um, to worship at the temple of Donald Trump um, indicates to me that there's something remarkably different today than what I experienced and I would guess what Michael experienced as well. Uh, it was not near as clandestine. It was not near as involved in surreptitious uh, strategy. It was not near as involved in, in extremism politics. It was... Uh, re just remarkably different. It all began to change in about 2008, and it's only degraded itself further to this very moment in time. Governor, there, there are two aspects of this uh, that I find to be damning uh, of this particular iteration of the Republican National Committee from your service uh, and from my service. You have reporting out uh, uh, the Guardian's Hugo Lowell noting the issue for the RNC has been the lack of direct revenues with small dollar donors seem to generally prefer to donate directly to the Trump <clears throat> campaign and larger institutional donors who dislike Trump preferring to donate directly to challengers like Nikki Haley. So that's problem one. 
where you have this bifurcation of the, of the money, uh, which, again, as you know, makes it very hard to, to do the kind of fundraising that the RNC needs to do, which is why they're sitting with $8 million in the bank at the end of the year. The second piece, though, which is uh, equally damning, if not more so, is that The Guardian is also reporting Republican National Committee wants Nikki Haley to drop out to boost funds. So you see this, this thing where the party is not just, you know, uh, in a bad position financially, but then putting its finger on the scale to try to push a candidate out because they favor another candidate. We know the rules inside the organization, Rule 11 letter from the states, uh, saying that this is our candidate. That They're not going through the process. They're just saying, we want the cash. We don't want this particular candidate. How does What does this tell you about where this party goes next, beyond what happens in this election cycle as it's setting a new floor for itself. Well, Michael, I'm not altogether certain that this party can be resurrected and can be reconstituted in a way that um, reflects its proud history in years before because of the dependence upon uh, the in incredibly uh, selfish um, and exclusively focused efforts uh, that are cruel, angry, bitter. Um, and as a consequence of that, reflecting, of course, the personality of Donald Trump, and the uh, people that are around him believing that these autocratic methods ultimately will gain them success. And uh, frankly, with what he's announced in reference to what it is that he intends to do, everything from suspending the Constitution or terminating, I think was his word, um, to uh, perhaps um, taking the Department of Justice and assigning him the duties of stormtroopers, trying to make certain that people who are his enemies are going to be held in the crosshairs. This is an incredibly dangerous moment in the history of this, this uh, United States of America. And uh, the autocratic tendencies of this fellow and of those who follow him, the desire for power, constant and unrelentless, is just something that mm -hmm. I think um, has to be communicated to the American people in a way that they clearly understand. And this grouping, this attraction to this kind of venom from a wide swath of people who speak, um, I think, or recognize that Donald Trump is speaking to them in a way that appeals to the worst side of their nature is something that runs contrary to our Constitution. So at the end of the day, I mean, our Constitution is based upon optimism and, and values, honesty, integrity, and uh, focus upon what's fair and belief in each other and trust in each other. He destroys all of that and sets about to do it every single day and to cobble together just a slight plurality that would allow him to secure enough electoral votes to once again enter the office. You know, I hear people say, well, I like this policy. I don't think he had a policy. I don't think he has enough intellectual curiosity to be interested in a policy. Uh, this is more about power every single day. And it is a crisis. And that's why the Supreme Court hearing yesterday, it's a part of why, it was so critical and why it was a little bit disappointing, frankly, in my judgment. When we talk about all of these things that they were hypothesizing about and ruminating about, that's not really their job. Their job is to be a judge in Article 3. It says you're to judge the case in front of you and to do it on the basis of the Constitution. And we have all these originalists on the court who believe that the Constitution says what it means and means what it says, and they're are po postulating about what might take place in Alaska uh, mm -hmm. or some other state. That's mm -hmm. not the case before you. The case before you is Colorado. So decide that case. Do the first right thing, and everything else will unfold as it should thereafter. Is this going to be messy? It's going to be messy, regardless of which way the court goes. But at the end of the day, if you have a clean call, and, and I'm, I'm just overwhelmingly impressed by the respondents' um, support of their cause. And if you have a clean call, we can work with everything else. We did it through the pandemic. Uh, we've done it through um, all of this morass of insurrection mm -hmm. that was instigated, precipitated, incited, and, and encouraged by Donald Trump. So we can make it through. Mm. All right. We need more governors I, uh, like, and more Republicans <laughs> like the governor right here and you as I, well, I, I enjoyed my time working with Governor Roscoe. He's just, he, he, you see why he's a special man. Governor Mark Roscoe, thank you so much for being uh, on the weekend with us. We really appreciate it.